In mathematics, operator theory is the study of linear operators on function spaces, beginning with differential operators and integral operators. The operators may be presented abstractly by their characteristics, such as bounded linear operators or closed operators, and consideration may be given to nonlinear operators. The study, which depends heavily on the topology of function spaces, is a branch of functional analysis. If a collection of operators forms an algebra over a field, then it is an operator algebra. The description of operator algebras is part of operator theory. Single operator theory. Single operator theory deals with the properties and classification of operators, considered one at a time. For example, the classification of normal operators in terms of their spectra falls into this category. Spectrum of operators The spectral theorem is any of a number of results about linear operators or about matrices. In broad terms the spectral theorem provides conditions under which an operator or a matrix can be diagonalized. This concept of diagonalization is relatively straightforward for operators on finite dimensional spaces, but requires some modification for operators on infinite dimensional spaces. In general, the spectral theorem identifies a class of linear operators that can be modeled by multiplication operators, which are as simple as one can hope to find. In more abstract language, the spectral theorem is a statement about commutative C asterisk algebras. See also spectral theory for a historical perspective. Examples of operators to which the spectral theorem applies are self-adjoint operators or more generally normal operators on Hilbert spaces. The spectral theorem also provides a canonical decomposition, called the spectral decomposition, eigenvalue decomposition, or eigen decomposition, of the underlying vector space on which the operator acts. Normal operators A normal operator on a complex Hilbert space H is a continuous linear operator N, HH that commutes with its Hermitian adjoint N asterisk, that is, N N asterisk equals N asterisk N. Normal operators are important because the spectral theorem holds for them. Today, the class of normal operators is well understood. Examples of normal operators are unitary operators n asterisk equals n minus 1, Hermitian operators, n asterisk equals n, positive operators, n equals mm asterisk. Normal matrices can be seen as normal operators if one takes the Hilbert space to be Cn. The spectral theorem extends to a more general class of matrices. Let A be an operator on a finite dimensional inner product space. A is said to be normal if A asterisk A equals A A asterisk. One can show that A is normal if and only if it is unitarily diagonalizable. By the Shaw decomposition, we have A equals U T U asterisk, where U is unitary in T upper triangular. Since A is normal, T T asterisk equals T asterisk T. Therefore T must be diagonal since normal upper triangular matrices are diagonal. The converse is obvious. In other words, A is normal if and only if there exists a unitary matrix U such that where D is a diagonal matrix. Then, the entries of the diagonal of D are the eigenvalues of A. The column vectors of U are the eigenvectors of A and they are orthonormal. Unlike the Hermitian case, the entries of D need not be real. Polar decomposition The polar decomposition of any bounded linear operator A between complex Hilbert spaces is a canonical factorization as the product of a partial isometry in a non-negative operator. The polar decomposition for matrices generalizes as follows. If A is a bounded linear operator then there is a unique factorization of A as a product A equals up where U is a partial isometry. P is a non-negative self-adjoint operator and the initial space of U is the closure of the range of P. The operator U must be weakened to a partial isometry, rather than unitary, because of the following issues. If A is the one-sided shift on L2, then A equals of asterisk A, one-half equals I. So if A equals U, A, U must be A, which is not unitary. 
The existence of a polar decomposition is a consequence of Douglas' lemma. Lemma if A, B are bounded operators on a Hilbert space H, and A asterisk A B asterisk B, then there exists a contraction C such that A equals C B. Furthermore, C is unique if C occur. The operator C can be defined by C equals R, extended by continuity to the closure of RAN, and by zero on the orthogonal complement of RAN. The operator C is well defined since A asterisk A B asterisk B implies C occur. The lemma then follows. In particular, if A asterisk A equals B asterisk B, then C is a partial isometry, which is unique if C occur. In general, for any bounded operator A, where one half is the unique positive square root of A asterisk A given by the usual functional calculus. So by the lemma, we have for some partial isometry U, which is unique if C occur, equals C equals C equals C, where B equals B asterisk equals one half, take P to be one half and one obtains the polar decomposition A equals up. Notice that an analogous argument can be used to show A equals P U, where P is positive and U a partial isometry. When H is finite dimensional, U can be extended to a unitary operator, this is not true in general. Alternatively, the polar decomposition can be shown using the operator version of singular value decomposition. By property of the continuous functional calculus, A is in the C asterisk algebra generated by A. A similar but weaker statement holds for the partial isometry. The polar part U is in the von Neumann algebra generated by A. If A is invertible, U will be in the C asterisk algebra generated by A as well. Operator algebras The theory of operator algebras brings algebras of operators such as C asterisk algebras to the fore. C asterisk algebras A C asterisk algebra A is a Banach algebra over the field of complex numbers, together with a map asterisk. A. One writes x asterisk for the image of an element x of A. The map asterisk has the following properties. It is an involution for every x in A, for all x, y in A, for every lambda in C and every x in A, for all x in A. Remark. The first three identities say that A is a asterisk algebra. The last identity is called the C asterisk identity and is equivalent to the C asterisk identity is a very strong requirement. For instance, together with the spectral radius formula, it implies that the C asterisk norm is uniquely determined by the algebraic structure.